Thank you, worship team, for leading us in that time of worship. You sang a whole bunch of worship songs. Did you believe the words that you sang? Yes, good. Some of you may not. Some of you may be struggling. Some may be singing, you give me the breath in my lungs, or you think you're just doing it yourself. Trouble is, we're living in a time when we're doing it all ourselves. Or we're perceiving things ourselves, and we're not bringing God into the picture. And the challenge of this year, this season coming into is now is the time. It's time to change. It's time to realize that time is short. Time is short and time is changing very rapidly. Things in the world are changing so quickly. And that's the challenge for each one of us. This theme, now is the time, has come out of a time when we as a leadership went away for a few days just to retreat and just to pray and sit in the word and ask God what he wants us to speak about this year. And so the topic and themes for this year is coming out of this retreat for a few days. And you guys need to hear that as a church. I don't just sit in my office and and go, oh, I think we'll talk about this in my own mind. My own mind's got enough stuff dealing with it, believe me. But this is a time when we stopped, when we prayed when we dug in and we're just searching for what God had shown us. And and when we bring it together, there's about five or six of us coming together and bringing what God has shown us through his word and through an understanding and bringing that together and formulating what this year's message is. And, And what was priority, what stood out on top was time is short. Now is the time. Lost people matter. And because they matter, we need to step up to what is before us because we hold a gift. We hold a gift from from Jesus. We hold the gift of his gospel. We hold a gift of eternal life through him. Amen? Amen. This is something precious. Something we are to share. Something that we've got to realize is so important for what's happening in the world around us. So the challenge is to step up and step out. I don't believe today is going to be very comfortable. But I don't think Jesus has told us to be comfortable. And he certainly wasn't comfortable in his journey, and he asks us to be like him. So let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, the challenge is that time is short, and you made it very clear that those who believe in you will be challenged, but those who believe in you are to share your message as well. And so something very powerful and something beautiful in your message is that you have put eternity into each of our hearts. So we know that life is just not now, but life has an eternal point. And there are so many that are in the valley of decision. And so, Lord, we want to be part of the team that helps to bring them to your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you agree with that? Do you want to bring them into the kingdom? To step up and step out this place where we find eternity in the human heart. God has already put a place in us that has eternal perspective. We should be excited about that. It should be something that we just can't help to share with others. But our challenge is to step up and step out. The trouble is in our world around us, 
right now. And the challenge that you and I have is a place of safety and security. And Jesus challenges that in this, in Luke 12, 13, he said, you know, someone in the crowd said to him, teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. What does he want? Money. Jesus replied, man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, watch out, be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life doesn't consist in abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. He said, the ground of a certain rich man yield an abundant harvest. And this rich man, he thought to himself, well, what should I do? I have no place to store all my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and I'll build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, oh, self, (laughs) you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night, your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you've prepared for yourself? And that's the challenge we have, isn't it? We are told that we work hard, that we have things set in place so that we'll have a retirement or a security. We were told that we need to look out for a number one, look out for ourselves. And that's a challenge we have because that's what's surrounding us all the time. But Jesus is challenging this. Jesus is challenging it to the crowd who's listening on. It's not about your your safety, not about your security. It's not about the empire that you build. It's not about the surplus that you have. You fool. It'll be taken from you. But this is the challenge that we have. We need to be in an understanding that we step up and step out to what Jesus has for us. You know, the world right now is, has got the sights on things that are happening. Do you? Are you seeing what's happening in the world around you? Do you know what happened this week? Do you know what happened this week on the news? Join us for two, 2023 Doomsday Clock Announcement. This happened on Tuesday. I don't even know if you're aware of this. There was an unveiling of the Doomsday Clock because it has changed again. Now, some of you might not know what that is. Let me explain it. In, uh, this is what the article says uh, in ABC News. Scientists revealed on Tuesday that the doomsday clock has been moved up to 90 seconds before midnight. 90 seconds before midnight. The closest that humanity has ever been to Armageddon. Who knows what Armageddon means? If you don't, tell your neighbor. (laughs) The bulletin of the atomic scientists moved the metaphorical clock to 10 seconds from where it had been for the past two years, citing the escalation in Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. For the past 75 years, the bulletin of the atomic scientists, a non-profit media organization, comprised of world leaders and Nobel laureates, has announced how close it believes the world is to collapse due to nuclear war, climate change, and most recently the pandemic, COVID-19. It's a metaphor. It's what the world is seeing taking place. It's a metaphor, a reminder of the perils that we must address if we are to survive on the planet. The bulletin which created the clock said on its website, also calling it, it's a design that warns the public, you and me, about how close we are to destroying our world with dangerous technologies of our own making. Did you catch on to that? The world is seeing that we are in a self-destructive collision. This um, clock was set up straight after World War II 
And this is the closest that they're saying coming to doomsday. But look at those words. Design, it's a design that warns the public about how close we are to destroying our world with dangerous technologies of our own making. People are seeing that there's a destructive nature that's taking place. There's a destructive nature that's, that's happening, that there's a, a place where we should be very concerned about what's happening in the world around us. But is our concern more about the world being destroyed or our concern more about the lost being saved? Now, how do you sit in the balance in your own mind? Are you more concerned about the world being destroyed or concerned about those not knowing who Jesus is? And that should be a wake up for you. That should be a challenge for you. That should be a challenge in your own mind because if you're more concerned about the environment, are you more concerned about nuclear war? Are you more concerned about pandemics and fear of sickness and illness in your own journey? Or are you more concerned about bringing the gospel to those who don't know him? Are you hearing me? Are you being challenged? Because I'm touching squishy spots on each one of you and you know it. And you know how fearful we were about COVID-19, right? How fearful we became as a community, how fearful around us. And we're watching the war in Ukraine and other places. And now we're fearful. Oh, what if that goes even further? And what about all oh, the climate and everything that's changing? And there might be other things in your own mind. But are you more concerned about those or are you concerned about what's happening with our Lord Jesus? Because we must understand the battle. See, what we just saw was a battle that's taking place across the world that's self-destructing. But are we seeing the battle for what it really is, a spiritual battle? Are we seeing it in our understanding? Put on the full armor of God, Ephesians 5, 11. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Oh, I've just brought the devil into it. Hang on, where does doomsday sit with the devil? It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, we just brought a new, a whole new picture into it. Didn't the doomsday is all about self-destructing humanity, but I'm bringing it to a spiritual battle place. And that's where we need to be, seeing it as a spiritual battle. Because our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We need to understand that this is bigger than what's just happening. This is a spiritual battle and it's been, been here since the beginning of time. Start to put it in perspective. Start to see what's happening. Start to see the perspective that this is not just about the things that are happening around us. This is a spiritual battle. And it's even battling within you. It's battling within you. Will you step out and share Jesus with others? The battle that's happening upon you and the challenges about your safety and security. The battle is against you as you see things happening across the world. The battle is against you where Satan doesn't want you to step out and step up. Because in Revelation 12.10, it says this, then I heard a loud voice in heaven says, say, now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God, this is Satan, day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. How did they triumph over, Je over the, the Satan? By the blood of the lamb, that's Jesus' blood, and by the word of their testimony, their testimony, their truth. And they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Did you hear that line? They didn't. Not, they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them, but woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury 
because he knows that his time is short. The devil knows his time is short. But we need to realize now is the time for us. We need to see that this time is our time because the devil's already been defeated, but he's trying to take as many as he can. The time is short, so we need to step up and we need to step out. See, lost people matter. Lost people matter. Those who don't know Jesus matter. Lost people matter. There are a multitude of people out there, people that you work with, people that are your neighbours, people that you do different activities with, people within your family. There are people around you that surround you. The challenge is that you've got to understand time is short. So this year we just want to emphasise and bring to the, a place where you, uh, you understand that it's time to share Jesus, for you to step up. Some of you might be going, oh, I don't want to do that. Some of you might be going, I don't know how to do that. But as this year goes on, we're going to be talking to you and challenging you. We're also going to be equipping you. And we're going to be in this place where we'll have different things happening during the year that will give opportunities for you to bring others to share Jesus, for you opportunities for you to be able to uh, have Bible studies, for you to come to a place where you might have people that you know and there'll be a safe place to bring them. But time is short. Time is short for you. I want to ask you a question. In your mind, do you think, oh, things are going to get better next year or the year after? We're in a hard place right now. Do we think things are going to get better in the next five years? Have you ever thought that you might be in the best time right now? that this might be the glory days? Have you ever thought today might be the glory days and in five years you say, I wish I could go back to 2023? See, in our minds, we always think, oh, it's going to get better, it's going to get better, it's going to get better. But to my understanding, time is short and Satan's angry and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. But the challenge is for us. What do you want to do? How do you want to process it? How do you want to, how do you want your life to be seen? I'm going to share a, a story. Tim and Kathy, four children, planted a church, good friends of ours. On the Tuesday of the fateful weekend, Tim and Kathy were sitting in our lounge room just enjoying a morning tea or coffee. They were pastors. They were church planters. They planted a church in our community, planted a church, worked hard at setting up this church. He would uh, do a postal run to help with the facilitation of running church on the weekends. They had this idea. Kathy had an idea. We're going to bring a whole bunch of young people, about 40 or 50 of them from the town we were in to Sydney to a big Christian event. So they put together this whole team of young people from the area to bring them to a big Christian outreach in Sydney. And so they had a wonderful Saturday, got up early, took the bus all the way to Sydney, brought these young people to hear the gospel of Jesus. Many of them made a commitment And on the way back on the bus, they pulled into McDonald's to, as you do, feed the young people. And as they were pulling out, they got about two or three, four kilometers down the road. And Kathy could hear that the back door of the bus was shaking a bit. So she went down to the back door of the bus and she went to grab the door to pull it in. And the wind caught the door and threw her on the highway in an instant. 
True story. Horrific story. A story that challenges each one of us. A challenge for each one of us because time is short and we don't know. We don't know how much time we have. But the beautiful thing for Kathy was that she was doing something beautiful for the Lord when he took her home. Her own children were on the bus. But that's the challenge, isn't it? That's a, a story that's hard. It's a story that each one of us would struggle with. We're in the middle of it and say, why would God do that? But what we need to understand is the bigger picture here is she was doing things for Jesus. And an amazing testimony of these young people who saw someone in faith take them to a Christian message. Some of these young people, where their journey is, the story, understanding the commitment, the life given for many young people. It's a story that we're challenged with. In Matthew 24, 36, we have these, these challenge to Jesus about time. This challenge to Jesus. Jesus speaks these words. He says, but about the day or hour, no one knows, even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, nor, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. Who knows what's happening with Noah? What was happening? Because in the days of Noah, before the flood, people were eating and drinking. They were marrying and giving in marriage up until the day that Noah entered the ark. Getting on with life. Being in that place of just seeing the joys of what they have, not a care, not a worry, but their hearts were evil. And Jesus says, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. When Jesus is returning, that's how it will be. Two men will be in the field, one taken and the other one left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other one left. Therefore, keep watch. Keep watch. Now is the time because you do not know what day your Lord will come back. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of the night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Amen. Do you understand what Jesus is saying here? Do you understand what Jesus is saying? There's a time and an hour you do not know when he's coming back, but he is coming back. Amen. Hallelujah. He is coming back. And we need to believe that because this is a spiritual battle. And we're so caught up in the things of the world, we're not seeing the spiritual battle that's taking place. We've been deceived. We're being deceived by the things of the world and we're not seeing the way that Satan is controlling what's happening. But many are in the valley of indecision. Yes, no. There should be one that says maybe. Yes, no, maybe. I don't know. Either it's yes, Jesus, or it's no, Jesus. That's the challenge that we have. So now is the time. Now is the time for us to understand, to make a decision, yes or no. Are we for Jesus or not for him? Do we believe he's coming back or we don't believe he's coming back? Do we, do we think that the, the world is just as it is and we don't see a spiritual battle? We need to understand what's really taking place. We need to understand that now is the time. 
now is the time to realize that it's time to share the good news of Jesus the Savior. Now is the time. Now is the time to share him. Now is the time to realize that he has set eternity in our hearts. Now is the time to get real. Now is the time to get real in your own journey. Now is the time to get real and understand what faith is all about. Now is the time to see how you can share Jesus with others. So I'm going to pray. In my prayer, if you haven't made a decision that's 100% for Jesus, I'm going to invite you into that prayer and you're welcome to make that decision today. And you might be saying, oh, I don't know if I'm here. I don't know what I believe here or there. Today is a time of decision. Today is a time to decide, do I accept Jesus or not? Is it time for a leap of faith? Is it time for recommitment? Is it time for you to show the Lord Jesus that you're real in your faith journey? So I'm going to pray that. If you want to pray it with me, you can. You can pray it in your own mind. Pray it out loud if you like. I'm going to pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, as I bring myself before you now, I've been in a valley of indecision. And I know that my heart is beating faster because you're challenging me. So much of the things around me have been challenging me. I want to do things my own way, but I feel like you are taking me on a path. Part of me doesn't want to give my life to you because I don't want to change. But a big part of me says, yes, Jesus, I need you to help me change. So dear Lord Jesus, I come before you this morning. I know I have sin in my heart. I know that I have sinned. I know that I make mistakes. I want to ask for your forgiveness now. I need to have your Holy Spirit. I need to have your courage. I need to have the courage to say yes Jesus, 100%. Lord Jesus, accept me just as I am. Allow me to receive your forgiveness. Set my heart on a new path with you today. Allow me to receive your joy and remove the bars of the prison that surround me. Let my heart come before you and you please, Holy Spirit, enter my heart today. Receive me as I am and transform me to know the wonder and the delight of being a follower of you, Lord Jesus. Amen.